they stay looking, but these brothers can't have me. They call me Lani Good Good, but I'm a bad B. Running up the bounds, broke bitches can't catch me. They call me Lani Good Good, but I'm naughty. Big front, big back on the show. 6 p.m. rule, 6 p.m. rule. Can we get the 6 p.m. rule, please? Can we get it, please, please, please? You know, they didn't say please. I did not like your comment because you're just rude. Have some manners, please. And deeper, you're asking me to film something and you can't even say please. The ones that gave exes, God loves you. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about the 6 p.m. rule and why I follow it. And I feel like the girls that are like me should follow it too. If you're 50 50 babe, then click off this video. This is not for you because you're just going to cry. You're just going to be mad in my comments and I don't need people be mad in my comments for no reason. The 6 p.m. rule is basically to do with a date. If the date is past the time of 6 p.m., he needs to make sure that you reach your destination safely and you get home safely and there's only two ways that's happening the 6 p.m rule is literally so simple if you go on a date past the time of 6 p.m aka when it starts getting dark he needs to make sure you reach your destination and reach back home safely and the only two ways he can do that is by picking you up in his car and dropping you off home so you walk into your yard and he can see you walk into your yard or he books you a cab and calls you and says, are you home safely? Now for the rugrats out there that are like, are you not a grown woman? Can you not afford your own cab home? How do you know I've made it home? How do you personally know that I've made it home safely? Yeah, you can call me, but you don't know shit. What if something happens? What if something happens in the cab? Thank you. At least when he books the cab, he can see what's going on. I'm thinking, why is this important? It's important to me personally because I'm looking for a man that knows how to provide for his family. It's small details like that that make you understand that, yeah, he will provide his family because it's just really home training. How can you take a girl out at night and not even know if she's making it to her doorstep correctly? Then, if you're not even really looking for a provider type of man, this is not the video for you. It doesn't matter. Really and truly, you should get yourself there and back wherever because you're a boss bitch, you're an independent babe, right? I mean, I've never claimed to be one of those. I'm a damsel in distress. I'm Rapunzel. I'll let down my hair. <laughs> so if a guy is telling you he's a provider, he provides this, he'll take care of you, look after you, and can't even make sure that you're home safe after he's dragged you out of your yard past 6 p.m., Cut him off. Yeah, the signal, um, the signal that. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Lani. Um, okay, so today I'm gonna do a quick story time based on a TikTok um, advice that I saw because it reminded me of two terrible story times, like basically dates from hell, based on the princess treatment. So. I stitched this video, but at this point that I'm recording this YouTube video, I haven't posted it on TikTok. Um, so you might have not seen it. I have no idea how many views it's going to get. It might only get like 2,000. Who knows? So if you, so, um, anyway, the point isn't the TikTok. The point is the topic at hand. Um, I saw a lovely TikToker. I don't know her name, but she was just saying how... Um, she came on my FYP and she was talking about how women need to, after 6pm when it gets a bit darker and it's a bit dangerous, when you go on a date, the guy needs to be responsible for you getting there and getting home or don't leave your yard because it's not safe. And I just um, disagree with that. Um, because the thing is, if you rely on the guy to get there, there's no guarantee that he's going to get you back. He's, there's not. Some men become salty if they don't get the punani. That's just a fact. And I'm a first-hand person who has been in that situation. I feel like if you're going to do that, just make sure you have a back. If you're going to go on a date and he at least got you there, um, and he's being a bit shifty about getting you back, always have cab money, always you're stuck. Okay? Um, I have heard several stories from my friends, from my sisters, and my own personal experiences that have let me know that. And here I am. I'm here today to tell you guys two terrible, 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 terrible story times of men who got salty and acted very, very weird about taking me home. And I could have got, I could have got, um, you know, R A P E D. But I, I didn't. But I could have. But I was S A. If you know what S A means, it, it means they touched me um, without my consent when I didn't want them to. Okay. Um, I might sound chipper telling this story because. I, I don't want to be in the shackles of trauma, but I will say this. Um, I'm telling this story because I'm passionate about women, um, protecting women and making sure you guys don't make certain um, mistakes. I've made it when I see people um, giving advice, which isn't necessarily bad advice because she just wants to be, to be treated like a princess and to be safe. I just need to come here and rebuttal it because I'm just like, it's not totally black and white. 
Okay, before we start the video and before I tell you the story time, um, I want to make something very, very clear. As a young lady, you need to be working on your driving license, getting your driving license on a car, okay? Um, you always need to be in control of your destination. You need to be in control of your safety. You should not rely on men for these things. Men can spoil you in different ways, honey. If you want princess treatment, there are many ways for a man to spoil you. I have had a man who I've never met in my entire life buy me a Givenchy handbag and some Louis Vuitton boots, okay? That came up to 4K. There are different ways to make a man spoil you. It is not by force that he has to get you a cab there and a cab back because, um, or pick you up because the one day you will be a, your story will be horrible and you will be on true crime. You'll be a true crime um, story because your situation went wrong. And if, a, oh sorry. And if you guys think I'm being dramatic at the end of the day, just look at the news. People be getting unalived every day, period. So I'm gonna start this, um, I'm gonna start by telling you, um, which story time should I start with? I'm gonna start by telling you the uni story time when I was in Birmingham Uni, my own uni. So um, I went to BCU, Birmingham City, something, something. Um, and I had a, I knew this guy, like, he was, we were cool, we were friends or whatever. And he kept saying to me, like, you should come chill with me. But he lived, like, 30 minutes, like, a 30 minute, 40 minute walk. And I was like, oh, it's kind of long, isn't it? And then he was just like, don't worry, I'll get you a cab. Cab at that time was only, like, seven pounds. So I'll get you a cab. And I was like, you're going to get me a cab? He goes, yeah, I'll get you a cab here, and I'll get you a cab back. Come chill with me, I'll cook for you, we'll, we'll, we'll survive. Remember, we, we are friends. I was, I, it was very, I'm not saying that, um... I didn't have any idea that he might have a crush on me. It was obvious. It was obvious why I wouldn't chill. But um I don't know. I just I wasn't necessarily going there um because me and him were having a, a a love match, but I was going there because vibes get to know someone and you never know at the end of the day where we would lead if they're a lovely person. So we I, by the way, I just want to make it very clear, it wasn't the first time I met him. I knew this boy and he'd actually come to my um um my uni accommodation one time and I made him spank ball. So I guess in a sense, I thought he was returning the favor. You know what I mean? Cute. And I had bought all the ingredients for the spag bowl and we had a cute little time and we washed a little sort of arm and he went home and he seemed like a perfect, perfectly nice guy. So now he's returning the favor, he's got me a cab. So probably put on cute little leggings, maybe a little crop top. <laughs> yeah, period. Probably had a leave out wig, a leave out weave that time. I can't remember, but point is, got cute got in a cab and i got there he lived in a he didn't live in student accommodation he lived in a house which is maybe why it was further because i lived in student accommodation which is closer to the town so yeah got into got to the yard um he takes me to his room and he hasn't cooked okay uh, he's not even gonna get takeaway he has crisps walker's crisps i don't remember what flavor i ate but the guy the nigga had walker's crisps Walker's crisps, yo. So I'm like, okay, this is interesting. This is very interesting. So anyway, I um, eat the Walker's crisps and I think he had some juice or whatever. And we watched a movie. We actually watched it. Like sometimes when you link someone, if there's like a loads of chemistry and passion, you might spend the whole night lipsing. And if you want to, you might do a bit more. It's up to you, your adults. I'm sure, I don't know if you are watching this, but if you are, I don't, you can do what you want. But we actually watched the movie. I wasn't suit, he wasn't ugly, but I wasn't overly attracted to him. And also he was my brethren and you know, I knew he liked me, but you know, we're getting to know each other. So we watched the movie and then guys, I'm not even joking. Which came before or after? Which came before or after? Oh, he then suggested, um, because he had no game, literally no game he then suggested that he wanted to give me a massage and i was kind of like because massages can be quite sexual and people use them as an excuse to touch you and i didn't want him to touch me so um he was just like wanting to give me a massage and i was just like mm. and he was just and i was just like i don't want i, I don't want to, it to leave nowhere you're not you're gonna behave yourself right and he was like cool yeah i'll just give you a back massage so i actually ended up like lifting up my top and he gave me a back massage. I put my bra on, but he gave me a back massage. Then I thought, okay, cute, let me give you one back. It was very, very innocent. But you know, fun, a bit flirty, but nothing too serious. I gave him one back. 
like we've watched a movie we've given each other massages we've eaten walker's crisps it's been a vibe i want to go home now so i'm like to him um yeah we've had fun let me go home and he was like in a bit i'll get you the cab in a bit or whatever and i was like okay cool he he then decided to like be on his phone for a bit and um i don't know it was like it was kind of obvious he was talking to someone so i was just like oh who are you talking to who are you texting and he was just like oh my girl he actually said that to me he actually said that to me and i was like you have a girl and he was like yeah she lives in america and then um i didn't have a problem with it because like i said i wasn't even sure that i really fancied him but um i was like okay great and then i was just like okay hun we've done the movie but also sorry like before i even move on like why are you giving me a massage with me and my bra if you have a girlfriend it's very weird but um i'm like okay cool like i'm literally over this like this guy has a girlfriend and he's doing the most like so i'm like <laughs> Can I have my cab, please? You have to remember, guys, he promised me a cab there and a cab back. So when I say can I have my cab back, please? Oh, I'm going to say his name, period. His, name's, his name was Yinka, real name and everything. Um, He was like, yeah, I was like, can I have um, a cab back? This guy, and, and let me tell you what I'm going to say his name. You, you'll learn in a minute. You'll learn in a minute what I'm going to say his real name. And I'm, I'm, I'm really coming for this guy, really, because he violated. So I'm like, can I um have my cab back? And then this guy is telling me, um, um, he's like ooming and arming, like he's like longing it out. And then he's like, kind of like, can't you get it? And the thing is, guys, I didn't have five pounds. I was, I think I was getting my money like the next day for my parents. And I didn't want them to know I spent all my money. So I could have just stayed in my yard where I have food and I can walk to uni. Like uni is literally like 10 minutes from my, my yard and i have food in my yard so i don't actually need money i don't actually don't need two pounds i actually don't need five pounds so that's why i told you i can't come out of my house i spent all my money i'm in my overdraft now i don't have money like what are we talking about so he's just kind of like i think you should get yourself a cab and i'm thinking why it was obvious why because he didn't get anything from me even the whole girlfriend thing was it even real or was he just saying it to piss me off I wasn't pissed off, but maybe he's immature, right? But the point I'm trying to make is, he started ooming and ahhing. And then we started having an argument. We started arguing. Because this guy didn't want to get me a cab. Because basically he didn't think it was worth it. Why should he get me a cab when he didn't get anything out of the link? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You cannot rely on other people. But like a dumb girl, I actually left my house with... I didn't have five pounds. I didn't have it. So I called one of my brethren. And I told them this story and I was like, can you, can you, I'm going to get a cab, I'm going to call a cab and when I get to you, could you pay it for me? I'll pay you back tomorrow. My friend said, calm. Um, and I did, period. I got in that cab. I said to God, guys, I had to storm out of the house. I said, on the street, he came after me, trying to be like, come and wait in the house. In my head, I'm thinking, you are an absolute prick. But anyway, I got the cab to um, my friend's house. I told my friend the story and I never told, oh, I've, I've missed an important part out. The friend that got me the cab was actually not a female. It was another boy that I was friends with, but we used to flirt. This one I kind of liked, but um, he was a bit, he was a lighty and it was a bit, he used to play a lot of games. Um, and, of, and the thing is with him is I kind of told him, which was a cab, but I kind of, because um, he, so the lighty that I fancied, one time we were chilling or, or hanging out and he'd shown me his pee pee. He just showed it to me and it was very ginormous but we just didn't do stuff and he, he sometimes he would ask me like oh why don't you want me and i'll just be like i'm not like i'm not that kind of girl like um i take a while to give somebody my flower so i basically showed to this um lighty i showed this boy that i'm a good girl innit? that's that's what i'm trying to show this boy that like, i'm a good girl i don't sleep around yeah no follow me follow me which is true. I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm an angel, but I'm not a whore. Yeah, I'm not a slug. A man's not out here. So, guys, tell me why. Tell me why. I get a phone call maybe a week later. Someone rings me and says, "Yo, you know that brother? Like, so the likely had a friend, like some, like a dark skin boy. Call me. We're all cool in it. We're all in a friendship group. Dark skin boy rings me and he says, "Yo, you know that brother that you said you went to link and that, that wouldn't pay for your cab?" And I said, "Yeah." He goes, are you sure you didn't do nothing with him? I said, no. We didn't do nothing. Why? He goes, he was talking very loud in the library about cheating you. Yinka. 
are you watching this I don't care if you are 21, I don't care if you are 18, 19, I don't care if you are 21, how dare you, never in your effing life lie on people's names. You lanky, lanky bitch. Never in your life. You lanky bitch. So you have spots all over your face. I never touched you, you never touched me, don't ever. And you know the worst part? The light you believed it. And after that, me and the light's relationship changed because he didn't... It's not like he didn't want to pursue me, but he kind of felt like he couldn't trust me because I kind of made it seem like I don't give my body out, but then I'm effing the next man. At uni, he even cock blocks me. Yinka, you are full. So anyway now, I told one of my besties, a female, and um, oh, by the way, sorry, <laughs> I'm even jumping. I confronted Yinka, yeah. This is his real name, okay? I confronted Yinka, so some of you watching this might know who he is. Yeah, his Instagram thing was like Yols or some shit. Yeah, I don't mind if he finds out, like, I'll block him. But, um, because he made a rumor about me. He, yeah, Instagram the name is Y-O-L-Z or some stuff, something like that. But yeah, he, um, um, I, I called him and confronted him and I said, did you say that we slept together? And my man was just like, oh, why are you calling me and chatting S? And he just hung up on me. Oh, I haven't got time for these stupid games or some stuff. You know you said it. Why would someone make that up? Why would my friend make that up? You know you said it. Waste man. But the point of this isn't even the story. The point is, I should have had five pounds to get home. But I shouldn't have even gone there in the first place because this guy was saying that me and him G. Ugh, what a waste man. Anyway, um, yeah, um, we saw him outside the club and um, my friend got rude to him. Yeah, I haven't even zipped up because it's tight when I sit down. That's why it's falling, by the way. It's not zipped up. But anyway, whatever, like, it was just beef from there. I tried to move on from it and stuff, but now with hindsight, as I'm older, I'm thinking about it, he did say that stuff. Like, even though he denied it, I know in my chest, in my heart, in my gut, that he made that rumor up. And for that reason, I do not like him, okay? And for that reason, he can remain my op. I do not like people lying on me. I don't like it. You know what I'm trying to say? I am not, it's not like I cap. I've been on the internet, um, I, I'm, I tell you lot more than the average person. I come on here and say stuff that's embarrassing about me. I can say if I cheat a guy, I don't like it when people lie on me. Don't lie on me. You never touch me a day in your life, waste man. Anyway, moving on to um, story number two. I went to, see, these are all uni times. <laughs> Maybe it's a young team. Maybe when you're young, just don't even bother with men because they're waste man. Waste men. But to be honest, you, sometimes you don't even do anything and someone will just will come and just disturb you and start lying about you. You've never even met them a day in your life. You don't even know them. So to be honest, if you just live your life, but people would chat the most nonsense. So, um, story number two is I was going to visit my best friend and she went to Nottingham Uni. So I go to visit her and um, she's got a friendship group. We had fun. I think we even went to some water park. Water park? Or some swimming pool with slides. I can't remember, but something like that. So we had loads of fun. It was lit. We, had a, we went to a barbecue at one point and we met some boys. Now... There was this one fine boy that I fancied, but um, I think he had a girlfriend, but he had a friend. His friend fancied me. Okay, cool, wh whatever, like, you know, people can fancy you, it's not, it's not a crime. So, cut long story short, the one that fancied me invited me to a drink up. Me and my friend, not just me, me and my friend. So we were meant to go to the drink up, but on the day, my friend was sick. And she said, I'm gonna nap for the whole night. Like, I'm gonna have an early one, you go. You've come here to have fun go to the drink up. Um, the boy had, because for me to go, the boy had actually said, I'm gonna pick both of you up. But obviously she's not coming now. So he's like, I'm gonna pick you guys up, I'm gonna drop you home. I'm like, oh my God, great. Great, uh, mind you, he doesn't live far, he only lives 10 minutes away. Now it's not like a huge party, but it's like a little gathering, people are gonna get, you know, lit, and it's just like a nice little gathering with friends. So I don't know these people like that, but my friend does, innit? She introduced me to them. So um, the guy picks me up, we go back, everyone's drinking, everyone's chilling. It's a very short little gathering, maybe two, three hours, and then everyone goes home. So remember, I'm at his discretion. I can't go home by myself. He's going to take me home. I can't go home by myself. So I'm like, um, you know, when everyone goes, I'm just kind of like, can you, you know, um, God, this is so annoying. I'm just kind of like, can you, um, take me home now and he's like um he's like yeah cool or whatever but he's kind of like i'm feeling very 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 like 
faded kind of thing like I'm a bit tipsy so if you don't mind I want to lie down so we can the alcohol can like wear off he was like if I lie down for an hour I'll feel a lot better so do you know what I wasn't in a it's not I wasn't in a rush but it's not that deep like I can I can nap on the, um, on the sofa you go nap in your room and when you feel better you can take me home um but then he was just like no don't be so silly like and then he goes come let's just do let's just do cuddles while we sleep like he made it seem very innocent and cute let's just do cuddles you know what i mean let's just cut just calm let's um uh, um let's um sleep in the bed or whatever leave your clothes on it's not like that he's making it seem like it's, it's not adapting you sleep in your clothes type of thing obviously and yeah we'll just cuddle and fall asleep so i'm thinking all right cool so we get in the bed i i think i face the other way i don't face when i sleep i don't face people in the face because I don't want to be start snoring in their face or whatever so I face the other way and I sleep and I think initially he put his arm on my waist to sleep which is calm I'm single this is not too this is not too much of an invasion of privacy it's you know it's a bit cute whatever so um as minutes start to pass um he's starting to like kind of caress me like on my waist a bit and I'm like sitting there thinking okay maybe he's just caressing me um and time is passing and the caressing is moving from my waist to like my bum and i'm i keep moving his arm but i'm not even trying to be rude so i'm kind of just kind of like, like giggling like uh, uh, and i'll move it and then he like literally touched me here down there between my legs he literally tried to touch me there and i pushed his hand there and i felt so vulnerable and the reason i felt vulnerable is because this could never happen to me now I would have been gone. I have a car. You understand? That that feeling of feeling violated. You can't even violate me because I, I if I I only say because you weren't gonna take me home because you promised that you would get me there and back. Like like no, I should always just take myself home if I don't have um, a car. I should just take myself home with cab. It was a trap. It was a trap he wanted to he wanted to f he wanted to g um and the reason he he probably made that whole thing up because i thought he was tired but you're not too tired to be touching me there you're really trying it i felt violent i feel like that's sa i'm sorry it is because i haven't even we haven't even lips i haven't even we haven't even lips i haven't shown you that i'm on you like why are you touching me so no nah, i just didn't like it i felt very uncomfortable um and i'm like can you take me home and he's kind of like come on like like not trying to kiss me but trying to like, be on me like trying to be like come on babes don't you want to have a bit of fun and i'm like no can you take me home please um then he got frustrated and annoyed high key um and he ended up taking me home but the whole journey with home was awkward and he was annoyed with me and it was just really uncomfortable and i kind of just felt like oh my god like this boy like it was just an uncomfortable ride and it was unnecessary it was unnecessary and the thing is yeah fair enough i didn't get actually r-a-p-e-d but like i don't even want to be in a situation where someone is touching me without my consent so to be honest with you know girls always um at the very minimum if someone gets you to the destination take yourself home take yourself home don't listen to these waste men lastly i'm going to close with one other incident it has nothing to do with being picked up or dropped home it's just the audacity of men because i'm trying to create a picture for you guys some men are very effed and they have all of the audacity okay all of it one time my brethren took me to east london to link two guys she knew yeah to smoke i don't smoke but whatever smoke and drink and chill get me on a saturday no one's doing nothing let's go smoke and chill with these guys in canary wolf they have a nice apartment sounds like a normal motive we went when we was in there, it was a bit chilly. A little bit chilly. So I like to sit on a sofa with a blanket. So I asked the guy, do you have a blanket? Instead of him to go get it for me, he's, he's I guess he's lazy or he's very comfortable. He's like, go in the room, the second room on the left, there's a blanket on my bed, grab it and come back. That's what he says to me. I should have known. That was weird. But to be honest, like, to, to be honest with you, like, it is weird, but... I feel like even today, if someone said to me, if I said, oh, do you have this? And someone said, oh, it's in my room, you can grab it. It's just on. Sorry, my battery died. But basically, man come up to me. Um, sorry. So I go in the room to get the blanket. Um, and I see it straight away on the bed. I grab it and I turn around 
to leave the room and he's behind me and I'm like oh so I'm thinking he came in here to help me find it so I'm like oh I found it and he's like oh okay cool and then he's like really right in front of me so I'm like okay cool um yeah we can go back to the room now and he literally just put his head like to kiss me like I don't know with tongue out like, uh this guy um he put his head out to like kiss me and he put his hand out and put it down there he literally like comes towards me trying to grab my punani i'm only telling you that story to basically tell you that men are mad men are guys because of my documentary my camera is full my all my sd cards are full i can't even finish that story time <laughs> my tattoo documentary all I want to say is the moral of the story is men are mad. Men will make you feel uncomfortable. They will SA you. Okay? Always put your safety first. If you know the brother and you, and you feel safe enough, you can, he can organise your transport. But if you don't know him and he's from Hinge and he's a random, you better find cab money. Or you better at least have cab money to get home. Okay? Don't get in random people's cars either. Okay? Do not end up like a friggin' victim of true crime and we're going to be hearing about your how he was um killed on on youtube watching it with popcorn no all right love you until next time bye Prrr.